name is Grace, also known as Mistress Penny Whistle, and today I'm going to be sharing how I made this dress for a ball with the Chicago Historical Costume Society. The ball was back in March and I'm only uploading this video now, but at least I got around to it. I'd been planning for the ball for some time in advance and was unsure of what I wanted my dress to look like. The period for the event was 1890s to 1900s, which was great because I have quite a bit of experience sewing for that era since I wear clothes from that period daily. However, I wanted to have some kind of theme for my dress to help me conceptualize it. Initially, I was thinking of a black and gold celestial theme, but then with the fabric choices I found, I decided on a beetle theme instead. So here's how I made my beetle dress. I started by drafting a pattern. The draft I used was the 1890s bodice from the book Creating Historical Clothes, Pattern Cutting from the 16th to the 19th Centuries by Elizabeth Friendship. The bodice in the draft is a day bodice which has a high neckline, but I would later adapt it into an evening bodice with a lower cut neckline. I also mentioned sleeves a few times throughout the video since I was debating whether or not to add small puffed sleeves which were popular in the evening bodices of the late 1890s, but I ended up eliminating them. I opted for a sleeveless option with a ruffle around the neckline which was popular in the 1900s, but similar designs can still be found in the 1890s. This is how the bodice looks. Um, this is actually my second mock-up. I added a bunch in the first mock-up to the chest area. There's a lot extra there, but it closes properly now. Back fits well. Darts at the front. I could probably stand to take them in a little more. Uh, this needs to be taken up an inch and a half. This is going to be an evening bodice, but I'm also trying the pattern out as a day bodice, just so if I want to use it again, it fits me correctly and then I can adjust the neckline once I try on like the sleeve and decide what closures I want to do and things like that. Mock-up number three in progress. I've made more mock-ups for this bodice than I did for like my corset, which is kind of stupid. To be fair, the corset had a lot of pieces to cut out, but hopefully the bodice fits well. <laughs> Hope it works. What am I saying? Of course it's gonna work. It, it, it's working. Bodice mock-up is looking much better. Back looks fine. I added a side closure. What I'm thinking is have a panel that closes in the front of like a lining fabric and then this will close over it and then the fabric will also have a shoulder seam closure that will go over the sleeve. Um, I haven't added the sleeve to this mock-up quite yet. I'm gonna see about the neckline and how that's gonna look for evening wear. Yay! It's coming along well. I really like the fit. And then I've marked approximately um, while it was on me with pins where I want certain parts of the neckline to fall. Like here is probably going to be the lowest point at the bust or like how far I'm going to cut out the shoulder. Same goes for the back here. It'll probably come down to about there. I quite like how the bodice looks now. The neckline's looking good. There's a little bit of gapping here right in like the square area. So we'll see how that looks on the final. Continues, I might need to take it in at the center front here. I'll want to put additional ease in the bust area, and there's ease here too. But overall, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased. A glaring issue which I did not address in the video of this fitting is the dart placement. Darts are supposed to hit just below the center of the bust, but here they're too high, which means they just look strange. I don't know, maybe that's what you're going for, but it's not my aim here, so I fixed that too. So I said I was happy with the bodice mock-up, but of course I wasn't, so I had to do more stuff to it. This fits the mannequin kind of terribly, because the mannequin is not me. And so I put the corset over the mannequin, but it looks frumpy. So it doesn't look like that on my body. What I tried to do was make it a side closure from here, and then when you open it, it goes like that, and then it's like that. However, when I was trying to put this on, it turns out it's really hard to close up this side bit, so I think I'm just gonna have it close in the center back, which is way simpler and easier. I just didn't do that because I thought it would be harder to put on, but I think anything is easier than what I tried to do with this thing here. Finally got the bodice pattern all finished. All the adjustments have been made. 
Looks so nice and pretty. And I even put the little notches because I'll be able to put it together properly without freaking out that it's not going together right. With the bodice mock-up complete and a vague yardage estimate for the skirt, it was time to go fabric shopping. The main fabric I chose is the satin faced dupioni and the overlay is a nylon netting, both of which are from a local Chicago fabric store called Textile Discount Outlet. Ball gowns from this period would usually have been made out of silk taffeta or duchess satin and the overlay would have been silk or cotton bobbinet, but this was not my budget. For the lining, I chose a cotton fabric with various beetle species on it from Joanne Fabrics. Linings on historical bodices were usually something like cotton shints, but I thought this fabric was cute and it fit the beetle theme well. The skirt hem is lined with stiff cotton crinoline similar to tarlatan, which was used at the time to give skirts some body. The ruffles on the neckline and skirt were made of a gold-striped chiffon that I got for free off of Facebook Marketplace. Once I had all the fabric picked out, it was time to cut out the bodice. The bodice pieces were cut out of both the lining and the fashion fabric, and then pinned together and treated as one layer. This is a technique called flat lining, which is common on historical bodices and allows for easy alterations. Okay. Oh my god, I'm married. I laid the flat line pieces for the back of the bodice on top of the net overlay and stitched them using a long basting stitch. I cut them out after they'd been stitched to the net so it didn't move around too much and change shape. The front pieces would have net draped over them later. It's the Beatles! Oh my god, is that John Lennon? Then I sewed the back seams together. I've got the back pieces sewn together, so we got the side back and then the center back. Seam allowances, I used about an inch, well, exactly an inch, not about. For the front pieces, I want to drape it as opposed to just cutting it out flat. With this, I've got the darts thread marked and then pinned, and I'm going to sew them so that this has the shape it's going to on the body, and then once I finish doing that. I'll put this on a mannequin and I want to do like a sort of pleated front with the mesh fabric whereas in the back I just have it laying flat. Yeah, let's sew those darts. I've learned in school how to properly sew a dart. At least the way I learned it, we start from the bottom, work our way up to the top, and then tie a knot at the top and leave some tail. You can see how I've done it with this one. Before I just kind of been like stitching the dart from whichever end and then back stitching it at the top but this creates like a nicer point and it doesn't come undone if there's pressure or tension being put on this bit here For the front of the bodice, I draped the net in a pleated pattern to give a bit of visual interest. I have a very rough idea of what I want the bodice to look like, but since it's not on me and my dress form is very different from how my body is shaped, the bust is smaller and the waist is much shorter than mine. I have an abnormally long waist. I can't really figure out how this is supposed to look. However, the idea is that there will be some pleating at the front here that comes in towards the waist to kind of create the illusion of a smaller waist to get the hourglass figure that was so commonly desired in the 19th century. And then at the top, I can't decide whether I want to have the pleats continue there or if they'll just be left as flat as possible. It probably depends on how much fabric is going to be down here and whether I can kind of finesse it out at the top and keep it from needing to be bunched up or if I'll need to have it pleat at the top as well. This is what the draping I have for the bodice looks like. These are all pleats, like the branchy looking things. This one goes up center and then they radiate outward. I like it. So my final will probably look something like this. The final did not end up looking like that since I ended up changing it from what I had pinned, but the concept was similar. Each pleat was stitched into place by hand with a short running stitch, catching only the outer layers of fabric so that the stitches wouldn't show through to the lining. 
I pleated the mesh how I wanted it on the bodice and then trimmed away the excess and then um, sewed the front to the back. And I'm really pleased with how this is coming out so far. I'm really excited about the fit of the bodice. There's this little like bump there that hopefully won't be there with boning once I put that in. Otherwise I'll have to like close it up. It's also, it doesn't have closures in the back. I'm just kind of holding it closed. So perhaps the issue will resolve itself once everything is done. I'll have to figure out a different chemise to wear with it because this one is showing through, especially in the back but I'm really pleased with it. This will be slightly lower because I this is just the raw edge, so it needs to be folded in and bound. Same with the bottom. It'll have a slightly shorter end point, and then I'll probably put some kind of sash here. But I'm really excited. The sleeves will go in. I'll need to make those. And I think it looks really pretty, and it fits beautifully. Yay! <laughs> To the inside of the bodice, I'm working on some bias binding, and I notched the curve at the center front because it's it's pretty curvy, so it needs to be clipped into to smooth over nicely. And then these are just straight because they're very. This one's gradual, and this one's barely even a curve. I was gonna sew these by machine, but I think it would make more sense to do it by hand, so I'm still I'm touching both sides. That seems to have been done a lot on a lot of like historical bodices as well so it would be appropriate for the project. All the binding on the seams is sewn, and I've added some bias tape to the edge. I stitch it on by machine underneath here, and then trimmed down the seam allowance, and clipped the corners and then folded it over. I just need to sew this down by hand using either a whip stitch or a slip stitch. I usually tend to prefer whip stitches. I find them easier and I just kind of like seeing the little stitches on the side of the bias tape. But from the front, it'll look like a nice clean finish. Also, hopefully these corners will lay flat and not be folding all funky, but I can iron them down and that will probably help as well. The top and bottom binding are finished, and it looks all nice and clean on the front. Like, no raw edges or anything, except in the sleeves, but I have yet to put those in. And then, for the front, I took in some around here, because there was like a little bit that was kind of sticking out at the front. And then I took in the back of the fabric, but not the net at the top that was just like kind of laid over top so there's no seam down the front um and then i just have to compensate for the bit i took in back here by re-pleating and re-stitching this little pleat and then this one for whatever reason just kind of worked itself out i don't know yeah i almost cut out all the pieces for my skirt mock-up but i need to cut one more and it's a pain in the butt because i'm doing it on my floor and I don't like that. Also, the fabric, I don't have enough of the selvage to have the straight green just sitting directly on it. So I'm gonna need to put the pattern piece like in the middle of the whole fabric and then measure with a ruler to make sure I have the grain lined up. Does it matter that much? Probably not. But even though it's a mock-up, I want it to be like halfway decent. Why did I choose to make a dress if I don't want to make the dress? I'm stupid sometimes. Also, it's a fucking disaster in here. If anyone ever thought I had my shit together, they were wrong. If you're my relatives and you heard me say swear words, no you didn't, I don't know those words. This is what the skirt mock-up looks like. I like it, it's good. It's the front seam isn't iron, so it looks a little weird. But other than that, it's fine. I'll have to make the back a little longer because it seems like it's a bit longer in the front. And I also want to move the side seam closer to the front of the skirt. And then the back is gathered. I like the look of that. I think it's cute. This is what the back piece looks like. It's pretty big. That's what she said. Initially the pattern was a four gore skirt that I drafted, but I'm considering cutting the back piece into two pieces. However, I don't know if I want to do that. I kind of like just the simplicity of the four gores, but it's also a question of whether I can fit the fabric over this. 
Time to cut out the skirt. Woo! Got all the skirt panels cut out of the main fabric. So now I just need to do the, the whole thing again in the, the mesh fabric. I'm probably just gonna lay it over top of these. Yeah. Both the main body of the skirt and the overlay were cut out and subsequently constructed with French seams, wherein the seams are first sewn with raw edges on the outside, then trimmed and pressed, turned inside out, and stitched again, enclosing the raw edge within the fabric for a clean finish. I've got like almost all the skirt pieces sewn together, except one of the side seams because I have to put in another pocket. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to have to explain on video how to French seam a pocket because I don't want to explain things. I brought this upon myself because I decided to record this as a YouTube video. Why is my knee in the shot? Expert cinematography. Okay, so basically what I need to do... I sew the seam to like here and then I put the pocket in right up against that. And then I sew it down either side of the seam pocket. And then I sew the rest of the skirt seam like normal. But then the funky French seam thing happens. So basically, once that happens, all the seams are on the outside. Then I'll have to like turn it over and then press it. There's also a piece of twill tape attaching the pocket to the waistband, as seen in Janet Arnold's Patterns of Fashion, so that the contents of the pocket doesn't weigh down the skirt seam. See, this is why I don't want to have to explain it. I sound like a dingus. I don't... I don't got time for quality content, because the ball is in like one week. Like, exactly. It is. It's a Saturday. So it's today in one week. I need to get this done, so the rest of the video is gonna be like, jank. Like, it, it, it already is, but more, more jank. You love a close-up shot of my face. What am I gonna do with this footage? <laughs> so now I've got this funky little strip, this thread, and that closes in like all the raw edge from the sides. And now, this side stays free, and then this side gets folded under so that it makes like a little skirt sandwich. One of these days I'm gonna figure out a setup where I can like not have to hold the camera and use both my hands to explain things, and then people will actually understand what I'm talking about when I try to show them the thing. Because that would be cool. The dress is dressing! I'm so excited! A few days before the ball, Marissa, one of the organizers, was kind enough to host us for a get-together where we could put some final touches on our outfits. We also watched the Sonic Snapcube voice dub parody, which I may or may not have had some part in suggesting. While I was there, I secured the crinoline hem facing off my skirt to the fashion fabric with a cross stitch. From here, I skipped a bunch of filming for time's sake, but I basically ditched the sleeves, put binding on the arm side like I had for the neck and waistline, added a ruffle at the neckline and shoulders, and cut triangles and gathered them to fit the overlay for the skirt. I put boning in the bodice at the seams and darts and secured it in place with a cross stitch on the casing, and for the bodice closure I added a hook and eye tape up the back. I also added trim and beetle wings. These are from real beetles and were embellishments on various 19th century dresses, albeit usually accompanied by embroidery. I actually had a few people ask me if these were acrylic nails, which is funny. I also included a sash around the waist made of polyester satin. Look at the little beetle wings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cha -cha, real with the dress, I wore white opera-length gloves, black-heeled shoes with green laces, and a beetle brooch. I also wore this beetle necklace that I made in a crafts class for my college costume program, but I wish I'd left it out because between a chunky necklace and my unruly hair, I looked sort of like a child who just left Claire's after spending all their allowance money on cheap jewelry. Fortunately, I did have other opportunities to wear the dress and styled it without the necklace. 
As for the ball, it was wonderful. I attended with my partner at the time, and I met some amazing costumers who I've admired for a long time, and saw lots of familiar faces I'd met at previous events, too. Everyone was so kind, and looked absolutely stunning. The food was delicious, the dancing was great, and the venue was gorgeous. I feel very lucky to have been a part of it, especially since it was the first event of this scale planned by the Chicago Historical Costume Society. The next morning, we went to tea at the Drake, which was wonderful as well. Thank you all very much for watching. It means the world to me to be able to share my interests with others, both at in-person events like the ball I attend, and online with all of you. If you enjoyed the video or have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'm unsure how many more videos I'll be making in the future, as filming and editing this is quite a time-consuming process, but you're welcome to subscribe in case it happens. You can also check out my relatively recent video collab with some other historical dressers on Vossie Birchwood's channel, or follow my TikTok and Instagram where I post more frequently. Have a great day, and thanks again for watching. First video since high school, let's go! Where a lot of the... the <laughs> video or have any questions, peace. Peace.